Bionic Gloves presents the Hands-On Golf Podcast, bringing anatomy and hand function to the forefront of glove design to improve comfort, fit, and performance. Bionic is a division of Hilrick and Bradsby Company, makers of Louisville Slugger bats and ball gloves. Bionic gloves are the only gloves designed by a leading orthopedic hand surgeon, Dr. Jim Kleinert. Welcome everyone to this edition of the Bonnie Gloves Hands-On Golf Podcast. My name is Chazra, I'm your host, and I'm here with Chris Thompson. Now he's the Director of Fitness at the Heiser Clinic here in Louisville, Kentucky. And he is also a former pro golfer. And we're going to put together golf and fitness to help improve your game and also your strength, your flexibility, and make you into a healthier individual. So that's what we're focusing on in this episode, because I've had a lot of people talk to me about that. I said, Chaz, we need a fitness podcast, so that's what we're doing in this podcast for you today. Now, if you have an idea for an upcoming episode, it's real easy. Send me a story idea to podcast at bonnetgloves.com. Make sure you have your name, full mailing address, of course, your question, and whether you're right or left-handed, and what size glove you wear. You do all that, and we use it, then we'll send you the official Bionic Glove. Now, Chris today is actually wearing the fitness glove, so we're doubling up on our Bionic products just for you today, because he's... He, he does fitness and he wears the bonnet club because it, it helps him. And with all that being said, finally, Chris, let's go get started. Let's get to the course. So first, the most important thing is getting warmed up. And the way we want to warm up is key. Start with something as simple as a jog in place. And that's going to start to warm up your body. It's going to get those legs ready to drive through the ball. And it's really going to increase that core temperature. From there, we want to warm up our upper body. So our shoulders are so much involved in the golf swing. Let's start with some arm circles. Going forwards, do this for a good 30 seconds, and then backwards. From there, we wanna get our core involved. So let's try a torso twist, or actually a crisscross here. Twisting the torso side to side, trying to touch your knee to your opposite elbow. From here, we wanna get a little more specific into the golf swing. We've warmed up our body, we want to warm up our golf swing. So let's start with some twists with the golf club. Notice your shoulder passing in front of your chin. So we're getting that big shoulder turn, ready to go. Ready to hit that 300 yard drive. Now we're going to move into some golf swings. Real slow at first. You can hold two clubs to really get those muscles going. And then after each swing, get a little faster and faster until we're approaching full speed after about 30 seconds. And notice my breathing is, again, a little accelerated because I'm forcing my body to warm up. It's going to be ready to get to that first tee, ready to knock out that first drive. Now let me show you a few exercises you can do in the home or at your gym to really add some strength and power to that game. When you look at the golf swing, the power starts from the ground, transfers up through your legs, into your upper body so you can propel that golf ball forward. So the best exercise you can do to strengthen the thighs is a simple squat, a simple body weight squat. <clears throat> the importance here is just like sitting back on a bench. The importance is that you don't want your knees to go forward like so. That's going to cause some knee issues. So if you want to add strength, power your thighs, practice sitting back just like you're sitting on a bench. Notice how I'm using the golf club to counterbalance so I can really sit back no pressures on my heels. I go nice and deep, feel the tension here, and then extend up. And this is really gonna help transfer to when you're extending through the ball, you're extending your hips forward. The same thing, you're extending your hips up when you squat. Now let's move a little bit up the body. We're gonna go to the core of the body. The rotational power that's brought up through the legs, transferred into the core, that's what we wanna work next. All right, so we work the legs, we're building up our thighs. Now we wanna again, work into the next part of our body, our core rotation. With these bands, I'm gonna to stand to the side. You could hook them up to a door or to a bed, something where it's not gonna come flying at you. And you're gonna grab it, and just like the golf swing, you're gonna rotate through. Notice my legs pivoting, coming through. So we're really mimicking closely what you would be doing when you're coming through impact. And this is gonna help give power Again, to your legs, your hips, and then into your abdominals and obliques, your core muscles. Start out slowly, but again, start to increase the speed of this movement. 
You want to make it as specific as possible to the golf swing. So if you want power in your golf swing, you need that power in this movement. So build up to where you are forcefully pulling through and you'll feel the stretch big time right in your obliques and your legs and you'll feel that power coming through. This will also help you with good range of motion as it's stretching your arms back and forth. One important thing, golf, you're always doing one thing in one direction. It's important to keep all the muscles in balance. So at home, do this the opposite direction as well. Now let's move a little further up our body where the power is coming out through the golf club. We'll move to our back and arms. If you look at a golf swing, when the golfer's pulling down and through the ball, the muscles that are doing that are the side of the back and the arms. Okay, it's the side of the back that's actually pulling, pulling that arm down and through. There's no push involved. A good golf swing is a pull through. So we want to train these pulling muscles. Your back muscles are what do the pulling. So we're going to take this resistance band, stand back to where you feel some good tension in it. You don't want to be too close where you're not going to get any effect. Stand back, good tension, and it's as simple as pulling or rowing the bands back to the side of your shoulders. And what I'm trying to do here is really pinch my shoulder blades together, squeeze my back to activate those back muscles. And although this isn't the exact same motion as the golf swing, it's working those same pulling muscles so it's going to give you more power when you're pulling the club down and through to the finish. Another great part about this is it's strengthening the back of the shoulders. The back of your shoulder is extremely important in pulling you all the way through to your full finish. If you're weak or tight back here, you're going to have one of the short finishes. You're going to lose that full range of motion. So this move hits two key components. It hits the side of your back, the lat muscle, and it hits behind your shoulders. Your two most important upper body muscle groups in terms of finishing a strong and full golf swing. We only have one component left, that's our forearms. What's going to give us the power to come through the ball, come through the thick rough? Let's show an exercise how to fix those. If your forearms are weak, you're going to lose that tension, you're going to lose a lot of distance. So we want to create Popeye forearms with a few forearm exercises. And one you can do with a band, you can also do it with dumbbells if you have some dumbbells at your house. But one you can do with a band is simply a wrist curl. Scoot back until you feel good tension, and then from there, all I'm doing is curling my fingers up towards my forearm. And you can see the forearm muscles are engaging and working. This would be one you want to do high repetitions on. Go for 15 to 20 until you feel that really good burn. And you're working right through here. You also want to hit the other side of that forearm. So reverse curl, palms down, this is a little tougher. And you're curling back towards your forearm again with the upper part of your arm. Work in the top of your forearm up into your elbow. You want to mix evenly the underhands and the overhand pulls. So strengthening the forearms, one area you do not want to neglect when it comes to golf fitness. Now let's get to some cool down exercises. So we'll start out with a simple shoulder stretch, pulling your arm across your chest, feeling a big stretch again throughout the back of the shoulder, an area we've worked throughout the day quite a bit, pulling those golf swings. We're stretching that back of the shoulder, hold it about 15 to 20 seconds, make sure to do both of them. And then we want to stretch our lats. Find something solid to hold on to, grab it, and then just pull until you feel your lats, the side of your back, really stretching, elongating, and relaxing. And then one for the legs. If we can come down to the floor, a real simple crossover, put one leg over the other, turn the opposite way, and this is a great way to stretch out your hips, your low back from all those swings, and really relaxes the body. This is a super exercise. Make sure to do both directions. Twist as far as you can, big range of motion, and there you have it. You stretched out the upper body, the lower body, the hips. We've completed the full circle on how to improve your golf game. So if you have any other questions, please come to theheiserclinic.com where we can help you answer those questions and really improve that golf game. So go out, shoot a good score, and outdrive your partners.